So today we're going to talk about factoring pattern 4 ax squared plus bx plus c. This section, as I said before, covers everything that we've learned so far. Okay, this trinomial covers all the trinomials that we've been factoring because now a is does not have to be what? The leading coefficient, the coefficient of the x squared doesn't have to be 1. It doesn't have to be 1, right? It could be any numbers you like. a, b, c are, right? Any numbers you like, and you know we could factor the trinomial with any ABCs now. After we learn today's lesson, so today this is the most important section of the whole factoring part of the book, right? Because this talks about general, right, way of factoring any trinomial, right? A does not have to be one anymore, okay? because you, uh, it was really easy when A was one. Remember? When you had 1 for a, remember it has to be 1x plus something and 1x plus something, right? Does that make sense? If right, you have 1x squared plus bx plus c, you know, you know the first two terms of the binomial right, must be x and x. Right? That's the only way to get x squared. You guys remember that? But when it's not 1, what would it would look like? So for example, if I have ax plus bx plus c, uh, do I have the same binomials anymore? Do I have x plus some number and x plus some number anymore? No. no. What do you have to have? What, any guess? Okay, so we gotta have some number here. But what do you think I have to have in place of instead of x and x? I have to have yeah, yeah, some number times x and some another number times x, right? It, it's not going to be one and one anymore. Do you see? Because if it was one and one, are you going to get some a x squared? No. Does that make sense? So that's the only difference, but everything else is going to be really the same as before. Right? We, we not, we're, the binomials that we're going to get, right, would not be uh, 1x and 1x, right? It'll be some other number. Does that make sense? When I do an example, it'll make sense a little more. L let's go to example one. I'll wait for you to write this down. So what I'm trying to say is this. For example, if I have example one, 2x squared plus 13x minus 24, as you can see, this trinomial is different trinomial than the ones that we've been doing because the leading coefficient, right, the coefficient of the first term is not 1 anymore. You see? It's 2. So can we do something like this where, can I do x plus some number times x plus some number? Yeah. Will the binomial look like this? No. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. Does that make sense? So what must it look like then if it doesn't have to? So you guys remember, it works the same way. The ver when you multiply vertically, you get the first and the last term. When you do the cross, right, with the diagonals, you get the middle terms. So what do you think we have to have so that we get x squared here? Samara, what do you think? 2x and? Oh, no, no, no. First two terms of this binomial. 2x and what? What about the one on the bottom? You need 2x and 2x? Would they give you 2x squared? Yeah. Really? 2x times 2x? Okay, I want you to think about it as a group. Go ahead. What do you think we need? Go ahead. All right, Samara, have you talked to your group about this? What did you guys come up with? You need 2x and x, don't you? Chuck, would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, if you had 2x and 2x, you would get 4x squared. That's not the same as 2x squared, is it? So you're right. I, I will need 2x and x. Or can I write x and 2x? Does it matter? No. It doesn't matter because you still get 2x, right? Square, I mean, 2x squared. So let me fill that out right now. Hold on. So there, I wrote down 2x and x. This is really 1x, isn't it? So, you understand? Right? Two, uh, because you could think of this as, okay, how many ways are there to get 2x squared? There's only one way, isn't there? 1x and 2x, right? Isn't that how you get it? Wait, there is actually another way. Turns out you don't have to worry about this case. Uh, negative. negative 1x and negative 2x. For the first two terms, don't worry about them being negatives and so forth. Does that make sense? We want to make sure that the first term is going to be positive, okay? So when, okay, but if it's negative, would the first term always be positive? No, but if it's negative, I'm going to show you how to deal with that in a minute, a little later. But uh, we're just going to think of them as positive, okay? We're just going to think of them as positive times positive. That will get you the first term to be positive. And if it's negative, like I said, there's a nice way to kind of go around, right? Okay, go around that problem. So we're going to keep the first term to be positive, okay? And if it's negative, like I said, we'll think about that later. How many ways are there to multiply 24? I mean, negative 24 when you multiply two integers. 
First, I'll show you the first one. For negative 24, uh, 1 and? Mm. No, not 1 and 24. 1 and? Negative, negative 24. If I could have 1 and negative 24, I could also have? Negative, negative 1 and 24. Does 2 go into 24? You see how it's the same sort of thing with 2 and what? 12. Not 12. 12. 2 and negative 12. If I could have 2 and negative 12, I could also have? Negative, negative 2 and 12. Uh, does 3 go into 24? Yes. Yeah, 2 plus 4 is 6, right? 3 goes into 24 how many times? 8, so 3 and negative 8 and? Negative, negative 3 and 8. Uh, what about 4? Yeah. yeah, how many times? 4 and? Negative 6. Negative 6 and? Negative 4 and 6. Right? And then it wraps around, right? 5 doesn't go in, then 6, there's 6. It sort of wraps around, so we, we stop there. So how many possible ways for me to fill out that blank, two blank there? 8, right? How many people say 8? Raise your hand. Turns out it's not 8. You're going to need... There are 16 ways. Because, look what I wrote here. Oops. You must check both orders. What I'm, what I'm talking about, what I'm saying is this. You have to check not only 1 and negative 24 and negative 1 and 24. You have to also check negative 24 and 1, 24 and negative 1. Not only do you have to check 2 and negative 12, negative 2 and 12. You have to also check negative 12 and 2, 12 and 2. So filling in top and bottom. So the order matters. Why? Why does order matter this time? May some of you see it? So if I were to plug in 1 and negative 24, it would not give me the same middle term as if I were to plug in negative 24 and 1 here this time. How come the order matters this time? What you plug in first and last. Before it didn't matter, did it? Yeah. We didn't have to care about the order, right? So oh, how come this time, okay, some of you, I want you to discuss with your group. If you know it, see if, you, if they agree with you. Go ahead. Why? Why does the order matter this time? Okay, as I walked around, some of you were able to see it. Some of you still have some questions. Let me show you. Let me ask you this. How is this two binomials different than all the binomials that we had before? Yeah, there's two. They don't look the same, right? The first term of the two binomials, they don't look the same, right? So if I were to plug in, let's just look at the 1 and negative 24, right? If I plug in 1 and negative 24 here, what do you get for your middle term? If I plug in 1 and 24, I get, for here, I get a uh, positive x, right? And then what do I get here? 2 times negative 24, which is negative Eight. 48. Eight. So what's 48? Negative 48 plus uh, 1. Negative 40, 47, negative 47, right? Now, do, would, I, do I, would I get negative 47 if I were to plug in negative 24 first here? Well, if I were to plug in negative 24 here and 1, what would, I get? what would I get? I would get here negative 24 times x would be negative 24. What is 2 times 1? 2. So what would you get? Negative 22. How can we get different answer this time? Because before, it didn't really matter. Why is it that we get different answer when we plug in 1, negative 24, and negative 24 and 1? The middle term changes. Yes? The coefficient of the first two binomials are different now. Before, we had x and x only, right? So it didn't matter, right, which order you put them in, right? What, what goes on the top and what goes on the bottom. Now, because the coefficient of the first two binomials are different, guess what? Does the order matter now? Yeah, do you see why they are really not only... Uh, eight, right, things to check, they're actually twice as much. Isn't that right? Because the order has to change. So how many things do you have to che uh, check? Six. 16. Does that make sense? But of course, you're not going to check every 16. As you do these, right, you're going to see, oh, I could see, like, I could already see 1 and negative 24 is not going to work because there's no way you're going to get 13 from that, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So you could kind of see which one will work by looking at some of these numbers, right? You get used to these, but... But, but you have to know that there are 16 possible ways, right, for you to check. Does that make sense? Yeah. And can I give you a little hint? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you notice. Uh, this is, I think this is going to be really helpful. Whenever, you, whenever there are so many of these choices to choose from, do they like the one where they're so far, like 1 and negative 24, 1 and, one and each end, or do they, want, do they like the one that are sort of close to each other? Close they, yeah, have you noticed that? Yeah. If, when you're doing your homework, like, they always... Like, not always, but many times they choose the one that are sort of close together. Does that make sense? So if I were you, I would actually look at the ones down here rather than, you know, the ones that are so far apart. So they like to do that for some reason. They don't have to do that, but I don't know why. You know what I mean? So go ahead and look for those. Let, take a look at which two numbers would get you positive 13 x squared when you do the cross. You know, the diagonals, when you multiply the diagonals, when you add them together, 
Which one of these will give you positive 13x? Okay, go ahead. Everybody think about this. And don't just think about these eight choices. They are really 16, right? You have, the order matters, doesn't it? Okay, so go ahead. Everybody think about this now. Okay, so who thinks they have the right combination of numbers so that when you plug it in up here, when you do the cross, then you get 13x. How about Bella? What would you get? How many people agree with her? Negative 3 and 8. Okay, let's plug it in. Negative 3 and 8. And of course, you should always be able to check and see if you got it right, right? So, of course, when you do vertically, you get the first and the last term. That's sort of easy, right? The, the, the interesting part is the middle term, right? That's where people mess up the most. So, 2x times 8, class, what is that? That's 16x. What is negative 3 times x? Negative 3x. Do I get positive 13x? Yes, I do, don't I? You see how that works out? Yeah. Yeah. Now what if, watch this, some of you are still asking this, what if I wrote down, instead of 3 and 8, I wrote down, let me do it in a different color, wrote down neg 8 and negative 3. What if I did that? Would this work? No. 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 As you can see, if I did that then, you see the order makes it different, right? 2 times negative 3, what is that? Negative 6. What's 8 times x? 8x. What's negative 6 plus 8x? 2x. Do I get 13x? No. You see why it... it Right? It changes when you change the order. Even if you found the right order, right? Of, uh, even if you found the right pair, if you change the order around, it's going to be different, right? It's because what? It's because you got 2x and x here. They're different. You see how they have a different, right? Coefficient for the first term of the binomials? That's the reason why. Right? Whereas before we had just had x and x. You guys understand what I'm trying to say? Okay? So that's how that works. Okay? Any questions? Let's try one more, because people, okay, so let's try one more. Uh, here we go. All right, here we go. Example two, 5y minus 17y plus 6. Again, our leading coefficient is not 1 anymore. It's, this time it's 5, right? The coefficient of the uh, quadratic term is 5. By the way, how many ways are there to get 5y squared? There's only... One. It's sort of nice, isn't it? Yeah. Like, can you imagine if it wasn't five? What if it was like ten or like some other ones? Well, we'll deal with that later. But right now, it's nice. There's only one way. So what are you going to write? The, the binomial has to look like what? 5y times something and what? 1y times something. Is that right? Okay? Do you guys get that? Isn't that the only way to do this? And you just have to, of course, figure out which two numbers you need, right? Go ahead, I'll wait. Everybody try this yourself. Okay, so as I walked around, I saw a lot of people just got the answer right away. That's great. But will you be able to do that every time? No. no. So that's why we need some systematic approach here. So you have to be able to write these down. So like write down all the possible ways, right? For six, when you multiply two numbers, you need to do this systematically. So in case that you don't see, right, which one works. And especially if I were to give you a polynomial that is prime, right? What are you going to do, right? You have to write down every possibility, don't you? You have to check everything. So, uh, I don't think this one's prime. Uh, how many ways are there to get 6 to multiply two numbers? Four. Eight. Is it 4 or 8? Eight? Eight. Okay, so, yeah, first you could have positive 6, 1, or negative 1, negative 6. You could also have 2, 3, negative 2, 3. And of course, the order matters, right? If I could have 1 and 6, you could also have 6, 1. If I have, could have one, negative 1, negative 6, I could also have negative 6, negative 1, and so forth. So there are how many possible ways? Eight, Eight of these. Now, who's, who thinks they have found the correct pair to use? Uh, who have an, How about over here? Paige? Negative 2, negative 3. Negative 2. How many people agree with her, uh, Paige? Negative 2 and negative 3? Does that work? Let's check. Negative 2, negative 3. Okay, so let's check and see if it works. Five times, of course, when you do oh, oops. when you do vertically, what is five y times one y? Of course, it is five y squared. That's how I got those in the beginning. Negative two times negative three. That's how, that's six. That's easy to check. Now again, the interesting part is the mi middle term, the linear term. Five y times negative three. What do we get, class? Negative fifteen y. And then negative two times y, we get negative two y. Does it check? Yeah. Is that negative seventeen? Why? Well, yes. You see how all three of them checks. So we have the answer. What's the answer, class? It is 5y minus, minus 2 times, times y minus 3. Do you see how it's very similar to what we've been doing so far? Right? You, just have, you just have a little bit more ones to check. That's all. It's the same exact thing that we've been doing. Do you understand? Easy enough? All right. May I go to example 3 then? All right. Good. 
Okay, go ahead and look at example three. It says 2m squared plus 3m plus 5. All right? Everybody go ahead and try. This time I'm not going to help you at all. You all try yourself, okay? I'll wait. All right, so let's do this step by step. First, how many ways are there to get? Of course, how do you get a trinomial? You multiply two binomial. So what must these two binomial look like if you're going to have 2m squared first? 2m. Exactly. There's only one way, 2m and m, right? How many ways are there to multiply two numbers to get five? Be careful now. Four. four. Is it two or four? Four. Okay, there are four, guys. Even though you may think it's one, five, and negative one, negative five, the order matters this time. So it could be five, one, or negative five, negative one, right? Because you have two M and M here. Different coefficients for, I mean, different terms for, different first term for these binomials. Now, how many people got the answer? Raise your hand. Who, who, who knows which pairs work? Here. None of them. None of them work, does it? Yeah. Okay, it turns out none of them work. Some of you had actually some numbers in here, and you never even checked. If you, if you would have checked, you would have seen that you're not going to be able to get 3M in the middle. Does that make sense? So you should always be able to know whether or not you have the right answer, right? Once you have the numbers in here, check and see if you get the right answer, right? Do the vertical ones for the first and last term, and then do the cross for the middle term, right? Okay, so what should we write then? None of these work. Right? Prime, yeah, prime. Prime polynomial. Prime polynomial. Okay? Uh, because, right, there are four possible ways. You must check all, all the four, four possible ways. Isn't that right? All right, may I move on? Yeah. So this one is prime. So as we mentioned before, not every trinomial will be factorable. Is that okay? All right. But prime is, will be the hardest, right? It'll be the hardest one to do, right? Because you got to check every possible, yeah, every possible way for this to work. Okay. All right, take a look at example four. This one is sort of interesting. We have 10x squared minus 13x plus 4. Okay, 10x squared minus 13x plus 4. Uh, this one's interesting. Why do I say this one's sort of different then? Okay, some of you realize. Claire, what, what do you say? This There's is. More than one way to get yeah, there are more than one ways to get 10x squared, isn't there? How many ways are there actually? Four. 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 Are they? Eight. Um, for 10x squared, let's look at the first term only, okay? For 10x squared, um, so it turns out there are, you could do 1x and 10x, you could also do 2x and 5x, and you may say, wait a minute, couldn't we change the order around? The answer is yes, but you don't have to worry about for that for the first term, because when do we change the order around? With the last number, you see? Right, you know what I'm talking about? So we're going to keep the first two, first, uh, terms of the binomials as it is, okay? So we don't have to worry about changing the order for the uh, first binomial because we'll be changing the order for the four. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Because we'll be changing the order anyway, right? For the four, you don't have to worry about changing the order for the first two terms. You're going to keep them same. Now, remember what I told you about, and have you noticed in the book, which one do they like better? The ones that are really far apart or the ones that are close? Yeah, they, they like the one, right? Uh, so in this case, as soon as you have more than one case of, right, one way to do this. You just have, you just have double the work that you used to. But which one should you try with first? The one in the middle. Does it guarantee that's going to be the one? No, but many times that's the one that they give you a lot. But let's say that I didn't. Okay, let's say that I didn't, and I just happened to choose one and 10. Let's look at then uh, four. How many ways are there to multiply two numbers? So you get four. This time, are there eight or four ways? They're eight because this time that's when we switch the order around, right? So you could do one four, negative one four, two two, negative one two, and so right? There seems to be four but there are more than four ways, right? So let's say that I did this way. Don turns out none of these will work. If I chose one x and ten x. Okay? I sort of did it already for you. None of these none of these is it four ways or eight ways do I have to check? Eight. There are eight ways, right? Well, actually, negative two and negative two. It doesn't matter when you switch the order. It's the same, right? Negative two, 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 two. Anyway, so yeah, all these eight ways doesn't work. So guess what I'm going to do? Am I done? No, because the first term is 10. Guess what? I'm going to check with 2x and 5x. Okay, everybody all try. So I sort of did the one. So I'm just showing you if it doesn't work, right, with one way, you got to try the other. Right, Eugene? Okay, everybody go ahead and try for... Uh, 2x and 5x, okay? Go ahead, I'll wait. So it's gotta be 2x and plus something and 5x and something, right? How many ways are there to try? 
eight, right? Again, there are eight. Oh, so we have the end. What'd you get, Chuck? Um, I don't know if this is correct yet. Well, you should know because two x minus one and okay. five x minus four. How many people got minus one and minus four? Does this work? And Chuck, you should know whether or not it works because you should always check. Does it work? Yeah. Yeah. So if you plug in negative one and negative four, does this work, guys? Yes. Well, two x and five x, you get ten x squared. You do the vertically, you get four. What is two x times negative four? Negative eight x. What's five x times negative one? Negative five x. Does it see that's that's the one that works, right? Any question? So if, right? If you so if you have more than one choice for the first terms of the binomials, right? You gotta check those, right? And like I said, what's a big hint? That's why I wrote hint really big. What do you think my big hint is? Whenever you have a choice, do you think you're gonna choose one ten first or two five, the one that's closer first? Yeah. yeah try try with the, the one that's closer first, okay? That's what books think to do. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So if I have example 5, 22 plus 5p minus negative 3p squared. Uh, first of all, this is not written in standard form. So guess what? Rewrite this in standard form. So there you are. And once you do rewrite this in standard form, negative 3p squared plus 5p plus 22. Um, it's sort of not like the ones that we've been doing because look at my first negative. term. It's negative. And remember, I told you if it's negative, I told you, I'm going to tell you how to deal with these. You could always make that one positive by making this as negative one times something. Can't you do this? How do I make this so that it's negative one times? Yeah, Dominic. Um, it yeah, it becomes negative one times everything what we had before except it's opposite, right? Right? Can I not, can I not write this as negative one times three p plus negative five p minus twenty two? Yeah. You see, that's the trick. So if, if if the first term, right, if the leading coefficient is negative, just write this as negative one times this whole thing. By the way, what's that called? Factoring out your negative one, negative one which is right, sort of easy. Does that make sense? So you, as soon as you factor out a negative one, everything becomes its opposite. Whatever that was negative becomes positive. Whatever that was positive becomes negative. That's why it became 3p squared minus 5p minus 22. Now, do you see how you could do this? It's going to be what? How many ways? So negative 1, does it go away? No. No, it's still there. Just, just sort of like your GCF. Isn't that right? It's just there. And now, how many ways are there to multiply two numbers so that you get 3p squared? One. There's only one. 3p and? And 1p. Right? Go ahead and try this yourself now. I'll wait, okay? Everybody try. Here we go. So there, there are really eight ways to multiply two numbers to get negative 22, correct? Even though I wrote down four, right? You, the other, how many people have the answer? Even though, yeah, Cole? Uh, uh, That's right. But by the way, does the negative one go away? No, it's, like I said, it's like your GCF. It's still there. So what's the answer? How am I going to write my answer then? You see how it's going to work out? It checks out, doesn't it? Right? 3p times 2, you get 6p. Negative 11 times p, you get negative 11. You get negative 5. So what's the answer? Yes. Oh, you could write it there. Or you could, you could leave it this way. I just wrote it as negative 1 times. That's okay, you can leave it this way. Or if you want to multiply it with negative one. By the way, when you multiply negative one, do you multiply it to both of these binomials? Yes. No. You're multiplying three things, right? You multiply two at a time. So you, do, you could either multiply negative one to the first binomial or negative one to the second binomial. You can't, multiply, you can't distribute. You mean that'd be wrong. You see what I mean? This is A times B times C, sort of. Does that make sense? You see what I'm trying to say? All right, let's move on to the next example.